Hey guys, we moved to France and we brought our pets with us. We couldn't let our family members stay behind, right? We're gonna guide you step by step into what we did from A to Z to get there. So what was the first thing that we did? Vets. Vets, so we looked up different vets and... They all were terrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, we looked up different vets, uh, all the local vets, since it was flying from United States to a different country in France, uh, they couldn't really tell us. Every country is very specific. Um, every animal, every type of animal that you bring, the size, the type, everything is very specific. What, what you can, what types of animals, pit bulls, that kind of stuff, if you might not be able to take inside of a, a certain country. There might be some quarantining time. So in, within those different variants, also something to be um, to know is that they only have limited seating, so to speak. They only have limited places. And so for us, there was a total of how many pets you could put on the plane? Five. And we have three. Um, so we have Enzo, our lab, who was 15. We have Skyly, our little gray cat. She's 17. And we have Rusty, our tabby cat, who's 14. So we had to make sure that we could secure those three spots out of the five as quickly as possible so we bought our tickets far ahead of time at like three four months in advance we hadn't even closed on our house or didn't even go to the vet visit before we bought our plane tickets but the vet was the definitely one of the first things we had to do was call and find out and basically you need vaccinations um a health certificate so that they can go on the flight and be okay that they're healthy enough to be that they're healthy able, enough able to fly um, yep, um, with the vaccinations and all the vet required stuff, we ended up calling a military base, uh, just randomly, doesn't have to be in your area, but we called a military base. They knew everything, military people travel and they move and their families move all the time. And so they knew all the specifics. So that's a huge, huge thing. Make sure to call a military base if your local vets don't know really what they're talking about. That's great advice, I think. And then um, they may, at the vet, they may provide a suggestion of taking some supplement or sedative that can just kind of help calm their nerves. So that may be something that you may want to consider. And if you do, you may want to test out the sedative ahead of time so you can see how your pets react to it. So if you take them like on a little drive, once they have the sedative, then that could be a whole video in itself. But um, it could really help them know how they're going to react to it. The plane tickets, we were able to fit two of our cats into the same crate as long as they had enough space to turn around, lay down, do everything that they, they needed to do. So they, we, we kind of put, instead of paying 400 bucks for each animal, we put them into one crate. Um, the options are above in the cabin or below in the hole. We chose to put them in the hole because we didn't want to spend a 12 hour flight, direct flight from Los Angeles to Paris, um, listening to our cats and annoying everybody in the plane, <laughs> meow all the time. Um, like plus you can't, you can't take them out anyway. They gotta stay in a crate at your feet. So it, it's kind of the same thing. Um, with the dog, uh, we had to make sure the crate was big enough so that they, you know, he could turn around and he could be comfortable in there wouldn't be touching his head, wouldn't be touching his head this way or his, his butt that way. After we got our crates, um, we got one off of Craigslist uh, and one new because we couldn't find the right size for our, our larger dog. Um, we didn't want this, we tried to make it the least traumatic as possible for them, whether it's for the flight, uh, buying a direct flight rather than multiple stops, um, just everything possible. We, I, it was a huge, huge move for us. It was like a 26 hour total move for us um, and so we wanted to stress them out the least amount possible um, so we got the crates and we put the crates especially for the dog we put the crates inside the house he's never been in a crate before um, and we put the crate out in our living room we opened it up we put his bed i cut a little bed out for him we put his bed in there and the whole time i was putting it together he was licking me he was super happy he knew it was for him um, and he just immediately went inside and for the next like three weeks or something, he just never wanted to come out. Um, if it was closed, he'd open it himself and he would go in there and, you know, he's really happy. So he got used to the crate before we flew. So it wasn't some traumatic, like, what is this thing? And now I'm in this tight little box for hours at a time. Um, so make sure that you, you get the crate and you get the animal used to the crate before.
Yeah, test it out. So there's a there are a couple appointments um, that you do have to go to. There's uh, that we had to go to for the for the vet. The first one was just a general visit, just to see how they were, um, just do a little testing, just to see how they were, how their health was, just in kind of in general, and some suggestions. So that was the first appointment. Second appointment was to get some vaccines. Uh, we had to get a rabies. That was the only thing for France that was required. Required was a rabies vax and the booster. Um, and so we did those with them. Um, obviously, we couldn't do the booster until later on. We didn't have any requirements for France, unlike other countries where they have to quarantine the animals. It really depends right. on the country, so that's specific. Um, but the vet did say, like, hey, your pets are going to be living their bonus years, considering their ages. Like, they'll basically survive, which they did. But it was kind of funny the way that they verbalized that. So we did get lucky with that, whereas in some countries, maybe like the Philippines, I'm not sure, but other countries, where I've heard of some of our friends going to and they had to quarantine their dog for a month and nobody really cared about the dog and the dog got really skinny because it wasn't eating as much. It was stuck in the cage the whole time. So there's there can be some bad things. So make sure that you're prepared. Um, but we got lucked out when we, when we went to France. There was no quarantine. Something that is important is as you get these the health certificate and the um, vaccination records, keep the originals, make copies, but keep the originals with you and maybe even take some screenshots of them so that you can be prepared to show them should you need to. They told us if they needed to make copies to make copies uh, for themselves, the, the, the airline representatives. Um, if they take your originals and you fly into the country that you're flying into and those people require some documents, uh, they need the originals and then you don't have them. So what we did is it's kind of like just think of it as their pet passport. They have all of their documents um, that are required for them to fly and we take that to the counter with us and we give it to them just as we would give our passports. Um, so after arriving in Paris, after arriving after 11 hour, 12 hour direct flight, um, first thing that we were worried about is our animals. We wanted them to, to, to be you know, happy and safe and alive and everything. Um, so they actually came out first. They came in the oversized baggage bin. So you got your main luggage claim here. And then off to the side, there's always like something for strollers or something for large, large stuff to travel in. And they both came out there. Um, they were all fine. Everything was fine. But I mean, after 11, 12 hours and then plus driving before that and all, all these hours that are that they're stuck in this cage, mm -hmm. Uh, there's nothing that we could do about it. Um, they, we just kind of planned on them pooping and peeing in, in, in the bins, in the, in the crates. And so we had prepared for that. We had some stuff to, to take some stuff out if we needed to. Our dog didn't poop and pee at all. He was completely chill. Um, the cats did. Uh, and so we dealt with that. We don't, we don't live in, in, in Paris. Uh, we flew into Paris, but we don't live in Paris. So we had to drive another eight hours down south and the reason why we had to drive, the reason why we had to get a, a rent a car, a big van, so that we can fit all these animals and our luggage and our whole life uh, in there was because the smaller airlines that were inter-European travel uh, were not accepting a large crate for our, our 80, 90, 80, 80, 90 pound dog. Um, they only accepted a certain size crate. And so we chose to drive down and just do the whole trip all at once. Um, it was going to be complex if we tried to do it like in yep. a bus or even a train. A train would have been an option, but <clears throat> carrying all of our luggage, trying to get on the train really fast and bring our, you know, the crate, hoping that the, the, the doors don't shut. Right. So that's why we decided to find a large rental car to do that. Just like we did actually when we flew up or we drove up to Los Angeles, we got a rental car for the same reason. And then, you know, we had to take the little bus to get to the um, airport and then wait around, you know, a few hours before and, you know, say bye to our pets before we actually landed in, in Paris and then had to get another rental car. So that was, that was a little adventure. <laughs> that was an adventure for sure. We tried to get them to go to the bathroom after we got to the airport and they were just kind of sm sniffing around and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And we waited as long as possible that we could. And um, it didn't really seem like they were interested in that. So we gave them food, we gave them water. We had all that kind of stuff taped to the, the top of the, the crate. Um, and uh, maybe, for, maybe for like two weeks after, three weeks after we got here to the house, um, our animals, all of us, our animals and everything were jet lagged. It's a nine hour time difference between where we were at and where we are now. Um, and especially our oldest cat was just meowing nonstop 
Um, I don't know if it was some like sonar thing that she was trying to figure out like the whole area or if it, she was just stressed out or, or whatever it was, but she just count on some meows if you have cats. <laughs> especially the older ones. The thing that also can help a big tip for when they're traveling in the crate, but also when you land and when you finally get to your destination is having something that smells like you, like the owner. So having, you know, a piece of clothing, that can be something that can be really effective when you're up on the flight and they can still smell you. Or when you get back to, down to your destination, and, you know, they still, even if you're there, they can still smell you. Well, thanks for watching. If you have specific questions, you want to know more details or you want specific videos, that are maybe pertaining more to things that we haven't addressed, feel free to comment below and we might produce that video for you. For sure.